Hello everybody, my name is Ryan and today I'd like to discuss with you guys my journey through my diagnosis and recovery with a rare benign brain tumor called a vestibular schwannoma, commonly referred to as an acoustic neuroma. Um, so this is my story I just would like to share with everybody. I searched a whole bunch of YouTube to try to find similar videos and unfortunately there's not a lot of videos out there that are actually um, like very personable. A lot of the videos are like charts, PowerPoints, super outdated videos, but there's not a lot of videos out on YouTube that show the personal experiences from people that go through these rare brain tumors, whether it be through the diagnosis, the symptoms that they have, the challenges that they overcome, um, and you know, just what life is like getting the diagnosis of a brain tumor, life is like after going through brain surgery or radiation. Um, so this is a very personable video. This is very personable to me. And I would just like to share my experience with others. And I really hope that this video does help bring some insight to what I'm dealing with. And I also hope that this video will help others understand what someone that has got diagnosed with this brain tumor goes through on the daily. And I hope, you know, that this video bring some type of comfort and make somebody feel better and help somebody in a situation like this because i know when i was when i first got my diagnosis it was hard because there was no videos that were very personable or relatable i scoured the internet for hours days on end trying to understand what type of this tumor was like what this brain tumor was how did i get it why did i get it what were the chances of getting this brain tumor and what the outcome of my life would be like with this diagnosis of this tumor and how it's going to affect me. my symptoms that i was having that led me to finding my brain tumor um so back in february of 2020 it was february 1st actually i abruptly woke up with a panic attack and i had never had those before in my life i had no idea what was going on i was like what is this i felt like i was dying like i was losing sense of my own my own being like I couldn't control anything. I felt like I was literally dying. I was so scared, I couldn't move. You know, I didn't know what was going on. My roommate at the time, um, Toby, took me to the hospital and we went to the ER and they said I was having a panic attack and they gave me some medicine. I believe it was Ativan they gave me to kind of calm me down with that. And that continued. The panic attacks continued all through 2020. I was told, you know, I have an anxiety disorder and, you know, the panic, it just kind of come out of nowhere. And it was really rough. It was very tough. It was very scary. I thought my life was coming to an end because I didn't know what was going on. You know, I had no idea why I was experiencing these panic attacks. They were very intense. Like they left me disabled. I couldn't leave the house, I couldn't do anything. I was afraid to go anywhere. I was afraid to like drink caffeine or hang out with friends, go out and see a movie with the family, go out to eat. Like I was homebound, I couldn't do anything. I was having a really, really hard time. Um, and that was just the initial symptom, was a panic attack, panic disorder. So working through this, while I was still working at my job, it was really hard to do because like I said, I, I felt like I was dying. I was having these very intense panic attacks. And uh, on top of that, I started having other symptoms. Um, I started getting really bad headaches and migraines. I started being really forgetful. Like my short-term memory started to feel really foggy. Like it was really hazy. I couldn't recall the simplest things that I just you know that I just did that I just talked to someone about um, stuff like that so my short-term memory felt pretty shot I was getting migraines I was getting headaches um, and then I was having this really sense of off balance uh, I didn't feel very safe standing on by myself like I didn't feel very safe by just standing up by myself or like not having support I felt very lopsided per se and while I was working I fell at work a couple times and you know I 
I didn't know what it was from. I just thought, well, maybe I have like an ear infection, you know, because ear infection with the equilibrium would throw you off. So I went to the doctors, um, was trying to figure out what was going on. I was in and out of the doctors from February 1st of 2020 all the way until April of 2021 before I finally got the diagnosis that I had a brain tumor. All through that year when I was going to the doctors, I kept getting turned away saying, it's just anxiety, it's all in your head. You know, you have maybe a sinus infection. Um, it's just sinuses, you know, just, just a bunch of stuff like that. You know, it, it really hurt, to be honest, to be turned away by medical professionals telling me that I don't have anything serious going on. But I listened to my body. You know, something was going on. I listened to my body, listened to my gut, and that led me to my brain tumor. Um, so, dealing with that, it was really hard. It was really hard. Um, it was 2021 of April that I got diagnosed with my brain tumor. My brain tumor that I got diagnosed with is a vestibular schwannoma. It's a rare benign tumor, thankfully. Thankfully, it's benign. It still caused a host of issues, though. Even though that benign word is in there, don't let it deceive you because I still have a whole bunch of issues because of the brain tumor and the surgery that I had to remove the brain tumor. So anyways, with that being said, um, I got diagnosed with my brain tumor in April 2021. I remember going in for the appointment. So how everything happened was, I was in and out the doctors all through February 2020, all the way up to April 2021. And I kept going because I was having a host of issues. I was having headaches, migraines, uh, dizziness, loss of balance, and then I was having what they call pulsatile tinnitus, which is a constant heartbeat in your ear. So I was constantly in tune with my own heartbeat, and it was in this ear. This is the surgery side, as you can see. You can see my uh, my gnarly scar here, my incision. I'm an acoustic neuroma warrior. A, hey, let's go. Um, so. There's something behind me crawling. I don't know what it is. But anyways, it sounds very close. I don't want to get attacked by something in this forest back here. <laughs> I was in and out the doctors all through February 2020 to April 2021. I finally got a referral to see an ear, nose, throat doctor. Um, and when I went and seen him, he was telling me, you know, he thinks I just have a sinus infection causing these issues. He prescribed me some medication to try to help. And I took the medication for a while and it, it, it didn't do anything. It didn't do anything. So um, with that being said, once I told him that I was having headaches and migraines, he's like, oh, that might be something neurological. We better get you a CAT scan. Uh, I went in, I had my CAT scan done. And then my CAT scan revealed that I had a brain tumor. And so then they, um, scheduled me an MRI to follow up to make sure that that was correct. I went in for my MRI and then I did not get a call back with my MRI results. Rather, I was told to come in to the office to talk about my results. So I remember going in to see the doctor and he sat me down and told me that I had a rare brain tumor uh, it's a vestibular schwannoma, commonly referred to as an acoustic neuroma. And I remember when he told me this, I just like blacked out. I remember just looking down and seeing the tile floor and everything kind of closed in on me. It's like my whole world was coming to an end. Uh, I started seeing tunnel vision and everything started getting black. And I remember my ears, both my ears started ringing really aggressively and I started kind of sweating. And I remember it felt like forever. It felt like time had slowed down to a complete halt. And I just remember, you know, him telling me that. And then once I came back to reality, 
he was still talking to me, but I didn't hear anything he said after he said brain tumor. My whole brain shut off. <laughs> and so I had to have him explain to me everything that was going on. And so then we, we were looking at options and the options being watch and wait, radiation, and surgery. Sorry, there's something over here crawling. I don't know what it is. But anyways, he said we had three options, watch and wait, surgery, and radiation. So I ended up going through and I met with two radiologists and two neurosurgeons. Um, watch and wait was not an option really for me because the, my brain tumor was starting to compress my brain stem. So they said that that's, we're not allowed to do watch and wait because of it, if it grew, I believe they said it was two more centimeters, which I know is very minuscule, but if I grew two more centimeters, they said that I was looking at respiratory depression from the tumor compressing my brain stem more. So watch and wait wasn't an, wasn't an option for me. Radiation wasn't an option for me really because of uh, them telling me that I had a 10% chance to get brain cancer from causation of radiation. And I'm thinking to myself, 10%, which doesn't sound like a lot, I know, right? But my acoustic neuroma brain tumor, my vestibular schwannoma as I like to refer to it as, um, I had less than a 1% chance to get that brain tumor. And I hit the brain tumor lottery, so. I was like, yeah, I'm not taking chances with radiation. So surgery was the option that I went with. I had a fantastic doctor, a fantastic surgeon. The whole team was fantastic. They did an amazing job at making sure everything was okay. I felt very comfortable with the surgeon that I met. He was very personable. Actually made me feel like a real person and not just a statistic. Um, so that was something that was really nice. For any of you guys that have been diagnosed with this tumor, please get as many opinions as you can before you decide on what you want to do. It doesn't hurt at all to, to meet with multiple doctors and get multiple opinions on what you should go with. Um, do your research, take your time, don't rush into it. I know getting diagnosed with a brain tumor is very scary in itself. And I understand the panic and urgency it causes but just please do your research because this is a this is a very serious thing, you know? Uh, it's a very serious decision that you have to make because it's going to affect you in some way for the rest of your life. So please do your research, take your time, reach out to others, join support groups if you can. There's a few support groups for acoustic neuromas and vestibular schwannoma on Facebook. Um, so don't hesitate to join those. They've been very beneficial, at least in my recovery and everything that I have going on. So yeah, check that out. So yeah, guys, I had my very first divine intervention is what I like to refer to it as. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, I had this dream, and this was before I got my diagnosis of my brain tumor. And in this dream, it was just me standing there in a very black room, but there was an operating table um, in front of me with a big operating light above the table and so I'm standing there looking at this operating table and there's like somebody under it there's a cover over it and I'm like staring at it and then out of nowhere on my side I get this very warm overwhelming sense of peace and acceptance and love and they spoke to me but it was, with, it was like my own voice that I heard talking to me. And it was saying that that was me on the operating table and that I had a brain tumor and that I needed to have surgery because I was looking at passing away if I didn't do anything about it. And it has stuck with me since this day. That was a couple weeks before I got the diagnosis of my brain tumor. So it would have been because I got the diagnosis in April of 2020, so it was the very beginning of April or the end of March. So somewhere between the end of March and beginning of April, I had this dream. I told my mom, I remember telling my sister, my friends, 
a lot of them just thought I was crazy and that it was just in my head. <laughs> Ironically, it was. You know, they were just telling me it's just your anxiety, you know, yada yada. But it was my own intuition or divine entity that spoke to me and led me to finding my brain tumor. So guys, I had my brain surgery on July 28, 2021. And I remember the night before I didn't sleep at all because I was absolutely nervous. I had so much anxiety about what could go wrong and if I was gonna wake up or not. It's a very scary feeling to know that you're gonna have your whole head cut open and your brain cut open and have a tumor removed from it, you know? So, it's pretty nervous. I was, I was pretty nervous. Um, but I remember I went to the hospital. They dressed me in drape and uh, I wasn't even allowed to hang out with my family because of COVID. So it was just me just chilling. They let my mom and dad come in and see me right before they rolled me off for surgery. And I remember going into surgery and then coming out of surgery when I woke up, I didn't know what was going on. I just know I was in a lot of pain and I was really dizzy and very confused of what just happened. And it was, it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. You know, I went into brain surgery thinking it was gonna be like getting my wisdom teeth taken out which I don't know why I thought that. That's, <laughs> that, was, that was really bad on my part because wisdom teeth surgery and brain surgery, completely different. Two, two different operations there. Brain surgery definitely took the cake on being a very difficult thing to get through. But, you know, I got through it for the most part. So, but um, some symptoms that I've had since my surgery are I lost like over 90% of my hearing in this ear and I have a vestibular I have a vestibular disorder now which vestibular means balance so I have a vestibular disorder now because of them taking out one of the uh, vestibular nerves we have two vestibular nerves one on the right side one on the left side and they went in they completely took the right one out because of my tumor that I had and um, so yeah, I only have the vestibular nerve on the left side. And with that, it, like I come out of surgery, I had to do a lot of therapies. Um, I went through physical therapy, vestibular therapy, speech therapy, facial therapy, and hearing therapy. So a lot of therapies I had to go through with the surgery itself. So anyways though, some things that I struggle with since my surgery. Uh, I struggle a lot with a lot of head pain, specifically across the incision here. Um, I have a lot of nerve pain is what I deal with. Because when I got out of surgery, everything sounded like an alien noise, like it was very alienated. It was like that alien Snapchat um, filter, if you guys remember that, it would be like, hello, what are you doing? Like stuff like that. It was like really, really trippy sounding, very uncomfortable. Um, so I dealt with that a lot. God, this is so hard. This is so hard to do, man. I didn't think making a video about my brain tumor was gonna be so hard. <clears throat> so guys, some of the things that I deal with since my brain surgery are hearing issues, balance issues, uh, mood and energy issues, um, memory issues. So we'll start off with like the hearing issues. Lost over 90% of my hearing in this right ear. And now I have this hearing aid to help here, which had to do hearing therapy for it's like over a year and then I finally was able to get my hearing aid to help with the hearing and then um, I had to go through vestibular therapy and physical therapy and occupational therapy which those were a lot to do um, I'm actually still in vestibular therapy uh, I had to use a walker for a while when I got out of the hospital
I don't want to get too far from you. I'm fine. Okay. And that was very discouraging to go from being fully bodied to have to rely on a walker, especially at my age, being so young that I am. Um, and then I had to graduate. I graduated to the cane, so then I was using the cane to walk, which I still have. I have to use from time to time because of uh, my vestibular disorder that I have. So have that and. Oh, you guys are okay. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my brain tumor I had. I had brain surgery, so. So we're doing a video maybe for awareness? Yeah, for awareness. Uh, May is Brain Tumor Awareness Month. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, thank you for asking, though. As well. I always look over and like, oh no, we're gonna be so loud. Oh no, you're okay. You're okay. So I see my neurologist and my neurosurgeon. I think there's a squirrel behind me. I'm not quite sure what it is. There's something, something going on back here. I don't know. But we've been hearing all kinds of weird things since we've been back here. Um, But yeah guys, so uh, they're with hearing issues, sensitivity to certain noises as I got diagnosed with hyperacoustics, um, vestibular disorder, so I have trouble with balance and stuff like that. And then we have uh, memory issues. As you know, it's a very big surgery. They go in there and they cut this tumor out of your brain. It's not fun causes a lot of neuro issues. Um, and then what else do we have? Oh, I can no longer cry out of my right eye, which that's felt, it felt like a superpower at first. I was super stoked about it. I was like, wow, I feel so unique and different. Not being able to cry out one eye, like I'm the one eye crier. It felt super cool. But now it's really annoying. It's a, it's a big nuisance, honestly, because I literally cannot cry out this eye. When I cry, it's just this eye. And because of that, it's, I have severe dry eye now. And I went through and had tear duct plugs put in the upper and lower eyelid. And both of those fell out. Neither one of them my eye was a big fan of. So unfortunately, I'm not able to use those. Um, so I have eye drops I use every day to keep my eye moist because I'm at a higher risk to go blind in this eye because of the severeness of the dryness. That was caused from the brain surgery. When I eat food sometimes, it's the only time this eye will water. So I have synchronesis. It's when my, my nerves and my muscles uh, were healing, they can join together. So now when I eat food, my brain is like, it's time to cry. So, you know, I like to make a joke about it all the time, about like, wow, this food is so good that's got me crying. Like, it's, it's kind of embarrassing to go out and sit and dine in somewhere because I always have someone staring at me like, why is this dude crying out of his right eye? But, you know, that's just kind of what it is. Um, and then we also have migraines. I never dealt with migraines before the surgery, and now I get migraines a lot. Um, and... I have a lot of issues with um, neuro fatigue. Uh, I get very, I get tired very easily from the simplest things like getting up, washing dishes, taking the trash out. Um, as my neurologist explained it to me, my brain is working four times. <laughs> Dang bird. As my neurologist explained, Bro, it's so hard to do this dang video with all these bugs flying around. We're gonna have to come back and do a take two probably. Uh, as my neurologist explained it to me, my brain is working. <laughs> what, what do you want, mosquito? We got him. 
as my neurologist explained it to me, my brain is working four to five times harder than the average person's brain to do normal things. And that's because of the equilibrium being messed up. So as I had said before, my vesicular nerve on this side is completely gone. That doesn't grow back, it's gone forever, unfortunately. And right now there's no type of surgeries to where they can just go in and replace that. Uh, your body just has to adapt over time. So I do only have one vestibular nerve. I have a vestibular disorder um, because of it. So days when I'm like really tired and drained or like throughout my day when I'm feeling a little bit more tired, I start noticing more issues with my balance and, and dizziness. Um, I have like chronic dizziness because of the surgery which that's been really hard to deal with, but it is what it is, I'm still here, you know, I'm making the best out of every day that I can. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's been a lot, it's been a lot to deal with. Um, brain surgery is definitely a lot harder than wisdom teeth, getting that, getting the wisdom teeth I thought when I went into the surgery was how it was gonna be, but I was completely wrong on that, the dang brain surgery. <laughs> way tougher than wisdom tooth surgery i'm telling you right now you heard it here first don't do brain surgery it's it's pretty rough so um yeah and then let's see what else do we got uh, i have to do mris every year now to make sure the tumor's not growing back and so far we've had great results on that no tumor regrowth has been seen um, so that's that's been wonderful But yeah, the takeaway of this video though guys is just to be mindful of others You know, I had this brain tumor and I had it removed thankfully But it doesn't change the way that I feel You know, I I had the surgery and it changed a lot of the ways that I think and the way that I feel every day you know, I was hoping I'd get this tumor removed and I would magically feel better. Unfortunately, that's not the case. You know, it's a very delicate, serious surgery going in. And uh, a lot of things happen with that surgery. So, you know, a lot of people, I would ask, I would ask for a lot of people just to be mindful of others that have gone through something like this. Uh, Acoustic Aroma Warriors um, are very strong and resilient, I like to think. I would just ask though that you do be mindful. You know, I have times where I say I'm tired and I get a lot of backlash about it because I'm not currently working right now. And I get backlash about, well, why are you tired? You're not working, but you know, I try to, I try to let people know like, if you go through brain surgery, you would understand. But what's the chance of you going through brain surgery? You know, it's, it's very slim that that's ever gonna happen. But it's just something that I wish people would be a little bit more understanding of because it is hard. You know, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. I'm, I get tired of having to explain myself constantly about why I feel the way that I feel. I feel like people should just be a little bit more receptive and understanding about what I have going on and what others might have, what others might also have going on that are going through this. Cause it's, it's very challenging, it's very tough. But I say you be mindful, you know, just because I look fine on the outside doesn't mean I'm okay on the inside. I struggle daily with balance, dizziness, headaches, head pain memory issues, general energy to do normal things. It's hard, it's very hard. I have a lot of neuro fatigue, like I mentioned. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm glad to be here though. I'm happy to be here. And I'm happy my surgery was successful. Um, it's definitely been the most challenging and hardest thing that I've been through. But I do know that I've gained a lot of wisdom, strength, encouraged I didn't know that I actually had. Um, I really reached into the depths of my soul to, to get through this and continue to get through this. Um, so it's not all that bad, you know. I've, I've learned a lot through this process. I've learned a lot about myself. Um, and, uh, yeah.
and I continue to do so. I continue to give everything, everything that I have every day to what, I'm, what I got going on. So I hope though that this helps others be a little bit more mindful of what others have going on. And um, yeah, I hope this video helps you too. Like if you're going through an increasing aroma or vesicular schwannoma, just know that you got this. It's scary, but you will come out on the other side. You will see another day. Um, and things will be great. Things will be wonderful for you. Stay positive. Try to look at the good things and things. I'll try to look for the good things and everything that I have going on. That's been something that's helped a lot. So being able to do that has been wonderful. I'll tell you what, it's been so hard to record this video. <laughs> I hope this uh, story brought you some type of joy, I guess. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> My suffering brings you joy. <laughs> I hope my story has helped you in some way of educating you and allowing you to be more of an empathetic thinker towards others and be a little bit more passionate to others and what they have going on. I know I'm not the only one that, that struggles with different mental health issues or health issues. I know a lot of people struggle with their own demons. And uh, I just ask that you be mindful. If every one of us could just be a little bit more, more mindful of what others have going on, I think the world would be a lot better of a place. What's up everybody? So there were some things that I did not get to mention in my recording at the park. It was actually really hard to record at the park as this was my first time doing like a vlog, doing a vlog. <laughs> but some things that I would like to address to add to my video was that I do have severe tinnitus now in this right ear it has been the most awful thing to experience as the ringing doesn't ever go away. It's with me 25 eight. Um, thankfully I do have this hearing aid which I got approved for after the year of hearing therapy. And that helps a little bit. It doesn't completely take it away, but I can definitely notice a difference when I have my hearing aid versus when I don't. So that's been a, that's been a blessing. I deal with vestibular migraines, also regular migraine, a lot of head pain around the incision. Um, like mood issues, um, depression, panic disorder, stuff like that. It's been a really eye-opening experience to say the least. It's definitely humbled me a whole bunch and has made me be very appreciative of the things that I am able to do and the things that I do have. I also got diagnosed with vestibular ocular reflux disorder. So that's to do with the way your eyes move and what the way that they are in sync with your vestibular system. My right side being the tumor side uh, affected that part. So I do have issues with fast moving objects, uh, stuff that requires me to move my head like this, like back and forth or up and down circles, stuff like that. My eyes bounce a lot this eye on the right eye uh, specifically. So it, like when I drive, for example, driving's pretty hard for me now. It's, it, it really exhausts me tremendously, especially if I have to drive long distances or if I'm driving in a very busy neighborhood or area. So like the highway, for example, gets me very dizzy and gets me very tired by the time that I get to point A to B. Um, and just like anything that's fast moving, I get like ghosting. So it'll be like the image is here, you know, but then it's like, it's like, it's almost leaving like a halo drag effect behind whatever I'm looking at. So like, I don't know how to explain it. I'm trying my best to explain it to you guys. It's almost like as you could see someone's soul leaving their body or something. Um, it's a really weird sensation. It actually just made me think about the falling through the floor sensation that I get a lot of the time. And that's just because of the the nerve. So my nerve was completely severed, the vestibular nerve on this side. 
So I'm getting a whole bunch of false input about where I'm at in my space around me. And because of that, sometimes my brain feels like it is up here or down here or, you know, over here, or over here. When in reality, I'm like right here in this space. So my brain is being overloaded with information that's not actually there. And it causes me to feel like I am falling through the floor. It's a really unpleasant experience. Um, I typically notice it happen after I've been standing for a long period of time, or if I have been sitting for a long period of time, or if I have just got done doing something very physically intensive, or when I get off an elevator, the elevators especially trigger it for me. Um, so that's another thing that I am dealing with. I also have trouble with spatial sounds. So like because of me losing a lot of hearing in this ear, I also lost the frequency of bass. So I don't hear anything bass in this ear. Everything's very just flat monotone. Um, but I'll feel like something is coming from like over here, but then it'll actually be coming from like all the way over here or like, you know, so like I can hear one thing thinking it's coming from this direction, but in reality it's coming from this direction over here. I have that a lot where I get mixed up with where I'm at, where I'm hearing sounds come from. I also would like to mention that I did develop delayed Bell's palsy after surgery. It was about a week after surgery that I developed Bell's palsy. They said it was delayed Bell's palsy. My whole right side of my face was pretty much non-functioning. I could not blink this right eye. I could not close it. I couldn't smile. My right side of my face was kind of droopy. I had to wear a moisture chamber patch, which is an eye patch that's specifically designed to hold moisture in the patch. So that helped kind of keep my eye a little moist so it wasn't so dry. And then I had a completely blacked out eye patch that I wore at night to basically block out all the lights that allow me to sleep because I couldn't close this eye. And... Oh, I had my masseter muscle cut as well, which is the big jaw muscle that helps us chew. They completely cut that in half and then sewed it back together. Um, so I do get jaw pain and it comes and goes. It hasn't been as frequent lately, which is awesome. But when it does come, it's very intense, very sharp stabbing pain across my jaw. Some of the exercises that I had to do was with my face. So like facial exercises. I had to do massages where I just rub just like this. And I'd constantly rub. And there'd be some like right up here. And then it'd be like spreading the eyebrow and then kind of pushing it back. Just like nice little massages like this, holding it, doing it, and then rinse and repeat. Come down here. Just a lot of like two finger massages of just rubbing in circles. Like doing anything like this till this day still feels very good to me because my muscles feel very tense still. Like I can feel them being stretched like this and it feels very, very good. Um, I wish that I would get that functionality of not feeling so tight. Like the whole side of my head here has been feeling very tight since surgery. Um, but like massaging it like this does feel really good. But yeah, I did a lot of facial exercises. My Bell's palsy lasted for about four months. And then it finally went away, thankfully. I do have some residual effects from it. You couldn't really tell as much now. Um, like when I smile, like it looks pretty proportional. When I pucker this lip over here. Needs to come up a little bit, but it's not terrible. Um, but my eyebrow. <clears throat> can do this. I can't really do it much on this right side anymore. Hello, hello. Hope everyone is doing wonderful today on this, uh, what is it, Saturday? <laughs> I am having some facial weakness still here on my right side of my face. Um, like my right eye is very lazy. Uh, when I go to blink, it, it, it blinks very lazily. Um, I can't really like 
keep it closed and just open my left eye like I normally would be able to. And then my lips, see when I pucker, it's a little crooked here. But hopefully here within time, you know, my facial nerves kind of heal and I'm not gonna have to deal with this because this is honestly, it's quite annoying just to like see myself and and like, you know, go from what I used to be and go to this, so. Hopefully within time that everything will heal up. But yeah, here's the uh, gnarly scar I got. So yeah, I did a lot of facial exercises. Like I said, I did that every day, multiple times a day. I was in the mirror just like, come on, baby, just move for me. Move, why aren't you moving? Come on, like it was, it was definitely a, a mental challenge to say the least because you're like looking at yourself in the mirror and you're so used to being able to just smile, raise your eyebrow, close your eye, blink, like normal things like that. And then when you're not able to, and that's taken away from you, it's a very scary thing. And I'm just like, come on, please just start moving. And then like, I said, I did all the massages and then I would start to feel like a little, like a little twitch. And I'm like, oh my God, yes, yes. Let me get more of those twitches. Like as soon as I felt the twitch, I was like, my muscles are coming back. They're working. They're like starting to wake up and work. Like anytime I felt that littlest twitch, it got me so excited. I'm really happy that, you know, my, my facial muscles healed for pretty much the most part, you know, that, that's been wonderful. I'm really happy with that. And my surgery was, I believe it was 12 hours long or 13 hours long. Um, and then I stayed in the ICU for a whole week. It was five days maybe six days. And I remember being in the hospital and waking up very early in the morning to go do therapy. We just walked back and forth down the hallways. Then we eventually leveled up and went up and down some stairs. What's up guys, happy Monday. Just a little update here. I did the most physical therapy today that I've done. Walked out of my room down to the two big doors down the hall, went through those, went around to the vending machine area and then walked up two flights of stairs. That was so freaking hard. I did not expect it to be so hard. It was very challenging. My uh, therapist was only gonna do one flight of steps, but I told her, let's just keep going. So I pushed myself. I did two big flights of stairs. <clears throat> Come back down. I'm laying down now. I just have such a horrible headache. Mom brought me some vegetable soup or chicken noodle soup from Panera, which was nice and a strawberry smoothie. And they got stepbrothers on in here, you know, it's on commercial, but yeah, this scar is, it's like super swell still. It hurts so freaking bad. And they got me a hole in my head here and I got uh, stitches in my lower back from where they cut me up. And I had these big, big like, um, leg pad things on that they would put down on my legs and it would squeeze my legs and it would help keep the blood flowing so I didn't get any blood clots. And I do remember every morning I had to get a hepara injection, I think is what it was called. And that's just like a shot in your stomach. I had to do that a lot. That was every day. Then I had a cocktail of pills I took every morning. But yeah, guys, I'm still here kicking it. I give every day everything that I have. I've been working very hard in my recovery. I give everything that I have in this recovery. If you want results, you have to put in the work and been the most challenging thing that I have been through and that I am going through but I am very determined to get back to a point to where I feel okay you know I'm tired I'm very tired of feeling like crap every day I just want to get to a point where I can feel okay again so but don't lose hope because it will get better like I uh was looking back at some videos and just seeing where I was to where I am today. Huge. So, sorry, I'm not trying to cry right now. It's a very emotional thing. Now you guys are going to see my left eye crying, not my right eye. <laughs> One eye crier, baby. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I hope that, uh, I just be a little bit more mindful of what you got going on and allows you to be more appreciative for what you, what you are able to do and what you can do, but please don't lose hope.
It does get better. It does. I'm a walking testimony of that. So you just find the strength to continue on. Reach out to someone that you're able to talk to. If things get hard, you know, join a support group. Talk to your friends. Shoot me a message if you need to. Um, It'll be all right. You got this. I know you do. So that being said, thank you guys all so much for taking some time out of your day to listen to my story and my journey. And thank you all so much for the prayers and continued love and support that I have received from you all. It means a lot to me. And I think that's where we wrap this video up. But yeah, thanks again for your time. As always, peace and prosper. Much love. We'll be seeing you on the next video. All right. Bye. Peace.